Hello and welcome to the Tottenham America channel. Today we will be giving you our player ratings for Tottenham's one all draw against Everton at Goodison Park. Without further ado, let's start with Hugo Lloris in goal. Lloris made his injury return today and he did put out a really good performance. Uh, Lloris made some really good saves from some shot ever shots from Everton. One of them was late in the match where he had to dive to his upper right, I believe it was, um, which was a really good save to keep it. I, I believe we were up 1-0 at the time to keep it, uh, to keep our lead. And he made some several other uh, saves during the match where he showed great handling to keep hold of the ball, not letting it go. Um... He was really consistent in goal today. I think the only downside of his performance was when we were building out of the back and his distribution wasn't the best. Um, there was a point where we were building out of the back and Lloris and Romero, they got themselves in a little bit of a mix-up. Everton were really putting on really high pressure and um, we almost gave the ball away and Everton almost scored. So yeah, Lloris, I believe it was uh, Romero who... Lloris passed to Romero... Romero, or it was Dyer that passed to Romero, and then Romero went back to Lloris. I think he expected Lloris to just boot it up the field, but instead Lloris went back to Romero, which was a poor decision. We were just, like, playing around at the back. That's something that kind of shows our defense. It, but that wasn't just for Lloris. It was Romero a little bit, and Dyer especially, to go back to Romero when he had Longley and Perisic on his left-hand side. But yeah, that was the only downside of Hugo Lloris' game. And next, we're moving on to Guti Romero, our right center back. I'm going to rate Christian Romero a 6.75. Romero was pretty steady today at defense. Really no mistakes from him. I think the only mistakes was his rash challenging, which really only happened once or twice. Um, they weren't the worst fouls he gave away because they were pretty far up the field. They, yes, they were kind of unnecessarily ch unnecessary challenges, but they were not in... A harmful area I think one of them was in a kind of harmful area the other one was far up the pitch but um he was also the one that won us the penalty um and today it was not a terrible performance from him I think he was a little shaky especially with the incident with Loris at the back when we were trying to clear it out uh, I think that was the only part of his game that was kind of bad but other than that I think it's not his best day but he did his job at the back Really, not many mistakes from him, and not he wasn't he didn't have that much involvement. But yeah, next we're moving on to Eric Dyer. We're I'm rating him a six point five. He had a really up and down game. One second he was jumping and making slide tackles and getting them right, and then the other second he's still being his usual D Eric Dyer and just waiting for the attacker to make the shot, not to shoot the ball, not going in for the tackle and he's just waiting off the attacker like we always see from Dyer. That's what we saw especially at the end of the match. Um I don't think he was necessarily at fault for Keane's goal, but before that, uh it was after Lucas got his red card a lot of things changed and we saw Dyer being his usual self and holding off from the attacker, which is bad from him. But earlier in the match he was not doing that which showed improvement. So he really had such an up and down game. He was really aggressive as well, really alert, had high intensity. But um again, one second he can go from being really good to going really bad to being really bad. We've seen that in many other matches. I think Sporting, when we played them in our 1-1 draw, he was good defending wise and he put he got forward, put in some great crosses, but then he missed three huge chances from headers. He's at one. He's doing well in one thing, but then he's at fault for the other. That's a very common thing for Eric Dyer to do. But overall, a the the good things and the bad things kind of level out, which make um meh performance. So Eric Dyer six point five for me. Next, moving on to Clement Longley. I'm gonna rate him a seven. Our best defender today. I think he was good today. Um, today was a good performance to show Spurs why they need to buy him this summer and keep him. Um, which. Wouldn't be that bad. Maybe we need to see him in a couple more performances to be sure that we want to buy him. But today was a pretty good performance from him. Um, there was only a couple times I can recall when he was shaky at the back. Maybe with Paris. I think it was dispossessed one. But then he made up for it a little bit. And we were able to defend it. Um, but he won back the ball a lot of times. Um, he won Yeah, he won it back a lot of times. And... 
he didn't really give away many fouls. I think there was just one, one, probably one foul that he gave away, I'm pretty sure. But, um, he won all of his tackles. I think he had a 100% tackle success rate. Um, and he had 10 recoveries. 10 recoveries. He won back the ball 10 times, which is pretty good from him. Um, and which is a real reason why we might need to buy him this summer, like I said earlier. But he's really starting to show his quality as the season goes uh, on farther and farther. And I'm kind of excited to see what he can bring us for these last nine games. And definitely our best defender today. So Clement Longley is 6.5 for me. Next, we are going to move on to Pedro Pora, right wing back. I'm going to rate Pedro Pora a 7. He was good today, not really having to do much defending on that right-hand side. But he did link up with Kulusevsky really well. Kulusevsky was also our star man pretty much today in our attack. And Pedro Poro was behind him, linking up really well with him. Especially in the first half, we were doing really well. In the second half, we were playing more on the counter-attack. It was either, well, in the second half, it was either us playing on the counter-attack or we were just sitting on the edge of Everton's box, really. And at times, Everton with 10 men were really putting on the pressure on us when we had 11 men. Uh, before Lucas got sent off, which was concerning. But um, as for Pedro Porro, he did pretty well today. Put in some, got an opportunity to put in some crosses, and um, had a one-on-one opportunity close to the goal early in the match, where Perisic swung in a, a cross. Pe- I believe it was around the 15th minute. Pedro Porro was there, right at the back post. The ball right was going right to him, but McNeil made a brilliant tackle to put it out for a corner right before Pedro Porro could get there. And um, nearly scored Pedro Poro. We scored last game uh, against Southampton that we played before the international break. But as uh, his Spurs career, as um, the season goes on and on, his Spurs career just keeps getting better and better, bringing in more goals and assists. And today he was decent. Next, we're going to move on to Perisic at left wing back. I'm going to rate Perisic a 6.75. Again, another another really mid performance from a Spurs player. He was really pretty good attacking-wise, putting in some great crosses. Recently, his deliveries haven't been great, but today they were good. Um, he was pretty good defensively, too, making some good defensive clearances. But I think he was a little unsteady on the ball today. Gave away the ball a couple of times. And um, gave away... I don't think he gave away any fouls. But um, he was pretty good attacking-wise. His crosses were not accurate, but they were in a dangerous area. Um, his crosses, he got a lot of crossing opportunities, I'll tell you that much, but they were not always accurate. He had a 1 out of 8 accurate cross percentage, which is terrible, but when you watch the crosses back, you can see he plays them into dangerous areas, um, which is good, but uh, Spurs' head needs to connect with it, which is the part that's missing, The miss- that's the missing piece. Uh, we also had three corners today, which Parasich took, I believe, all three of them. And um, they were all pretty good into the dangerous area, but no Spurs player could get ahead on that cross that Perisic put in. But overall, a decent performance from Ivan Perisic. Next, moving on to our midfield, starting with Pierre Emil Hoybier. I'm going to rate him a 6.75. Hoybier in midfield, very intense from the beginning of the match. I think as the match went on, he began to fatigue a little bit and drop the intensity. I think a sub would have been necessary. I think more of that happened to Skip than to Hoybier. Um but Hoybier was decent throughout the entire match. Um we know he can last 90 minutes, but still, he's only human, so he'll get tired as the game goes on. Like after the 80th minute, he's going to start getting tired, and that's when Stellini makes needs to make some subs. But I don't think Stellini made the right subs today, not in the right areas that we needed. But Hoybier was winning back balls pretty well today and was very aggressive and um, aggressive and intense in midfield. He had nine recoveries. He won the ball back nine times, with his ver- which is very classic from him. He always wins the ball back many times. Typically, he has the most recoveries out of any Spurs player in most games. And he was only dispossessed once, which is a good stat for a midfielder. Midfielders typically don't want to get dispossessed too much. Um... So, Hoybier, good performance from him today. Decent performance. I think it just lacked a little bit towards the end of the match. And now we're going to move on to Skip, his midfield partner. I'm going to give Skip a a slightly lower rating, a 6.5, because I pretty much all the same things for Pierre. He was just not as good as him, um, especially going towards the end of the match. More of the fatigue and 
stuff like that played a part on Skip, which is why to bring Sauron for Skip could have helped so much since Skip is not always used to playing a full 90 minutes. If Selene brought Sauron for Skip, things could have been much different. And Skip, you can see he got fatigued a lot late in the game, started making some lazy challenges, and was not closing the ball down, which was did which did lead up to Keen's goal. Keen was not being closed down, and Skip was mainly the guy at fault for it. So, not the best performance from Oliver Skip today. Next, moving on to our man, probably our man of the match today, maybe tied man of the match with Kane, Dejan Kulisewski. I'm going to rate him a 7.5. So energetic today, making runs up and down the, the touchline, and being really physical today. He probably had the most chances for us, probably created the most chances. Um... I know we played on the counter attack, uh, counter attack today a lot, and it was often Kane playing a ball into Kulusevski, and then Son was looking to make a run, especially in the first half. And Dejan Kulusevski completed five dribbles, which was the most in the match. Um, and Kulusevski, which really looked like really hungry for a goal, we know he's been battling injuries this season, and I think these this last well not after this game not last nine games of the season will be a good run for him since he'll be in the starting lineup. But Kulitsevsky, our bright, definitely our brightest attacker today and really good. Next, moving on to our goal scorer today and the man who forced the yellow, the red card for Abdullah Dukure, Harry Kane. I'm also going to give him a 7.5. Kane, with all the mind games from Pickford, it was a really good dispatched penalty from him into the bottom left corner. Um... And good game management, too, to force the um, red card from Abdullah Dukure. Another thing, though, is when Kane received the ball, most, this, most defenders make a mistake and don't close him down right away because most defenders don't know what he can possibly do with the ball at his feet in terms of passing. But uh, Kane and Tarkowski knew exactly what he was doing, and they made many tactical fouls on him whenever he got the ball, which really hindered his... Um, opportunity to play long balls and through balls. He still did get a couple off, but um, I think if it wasn't for Tarkowski and Keen being right on his tail all the time, um, he could have gotten a lot more long balls off and um, possibly could have led to Spurs scoring more, but a good performance from Kane overall. Next, moving on to our last player that we're going to rate, Hyungman Son. I'm going to give him a 6.75. He looked pretty intense. He had good intensity in the first half. I think he did start to get fatigued, which is why we brought him off for Lucas later in the match. Um, he did have one chance, I believe. It was a one-on-one -on -one with Pickford. And like his finishing has been this season, not the sharpest. It was um, not the best finish from him. It hit. Uh, Pickford was able to save it. Not that comfortably, though. He did have to reach with his leg a little bit. But that, that segment of play was offside. Son was offside by just a little bit. But other than that, Son was pretty good today. Um, was really wasn't really at fault for many defensive errors. Uh, made some good dribbles and looked very positive when he made his runs. I think a big mistake was to bring Lucas on for Son, a man who's been battling injuries literally, and we know that he doesn't have the same quality as he did two years ago. I have no clue why Stellini brought Lucas on. He should have brought on Denjuma, but no. It seems like Stellini and Conte have something against Denjuma. For some reason, they just don't trust him. Uh, we saw that with Can Conte, and now it's carrying over to Stellini. So yeah, um, better choice there would have to bring would have been to bring Denjuma on. But overall, a not bad performance by Hyungmin Son. That will conclude our player ratings for Tottenham's one all draw against Everton at Goodison Park. Make sure you comment down below your thoughts on the players and rate them. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe, and until next time, come on you Spurs!